Hey everyone, it's your boy. Can't figure out how to master audio here. And we're gonna take a little look at Slasher's Keep. Probably one of the best indie games I've played in a while. And I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks on your first run through. So let's jump right into it. All right, let's randomize all this. I think I'm gonna be a Sasquatch because I'm a complete ape. I'm not gonna play on easy mode or permadeath. And I'm not gonna make it too long or too short with the dungeon depth. But other than that, just random. It kind of affects your skills in game, but it's not too big of a deal. I'm going to jump right into it. If you want to pause and read the lore, go ahead. But Ape not here to read. Ape only here to make violence. Alrighty, they put Monkey Man in a cage. There's a turd in a box. We're a turd in a box. we got to break out. Run our face right into this door. Easy. All's over. This chest will have beginner loot in it. Nice. Pick it up. Open up uh, inventory with tab. See Monkey Man is Monkey Nips. Cover that up. Don't worry about it. Quick overview of your character in all the slots. Uh, let's see what else. Yep, directional attack, ASD, swing, same thing with defense, right click, point sword at enemy to block. Pretty easy. So easy a monkey can do it. I'm a monkey. I'm doing it. Next thing, slash this web and we're out. But let's not forget the best attack in the game, the sack slap. Oh, you're going to see a monkey man slapping people with his sack. Oh, lucky you. All right, first room. First level of the dungeon. Tips and tricks. Those little holes in the ceiling behind the monster right there. They're bars that'll trap monkey inside the room. So don't do that. Monsters have crit areas, the face, sneak attacks, uh, running slashes, that kind of thing. So use them as much as you can. You can also charge up your attacks by holding in the left click and swinging down at them. So big tactic, don't get trapped. Those little holes, they'll trap you in. You get too far into this doorway. You want to aggro the monsters out. Eventually you get strong enough where you don't need to do this. But for the time being, that's the tactic. All right, just cleared a room. You are low on health. What do you do? Be vigilant, look around. Be like Bear Grylls. Innovate. Oh, there's a maggot. Bam. That's some HP. You would have knocked over these drinks. You wouldn't be able to drink them. They give you XP, right? Don't eat moldy food because it'll kill you. Chicken. Yum. Jump around, look, there's a maggot up there. If you weren't jumping around, you wouldn't have seen that maggot. You know, you gotta be like Bear Grylls. Drink your own piss, but be vigilant. Alrighty, I've managed to capture Monkey Man. The door's closed behind him. You're trapped in here with the mage, but you've already kited out most of the monsters. What do you do? You just get out of the LOS of the mage if you can. Take on the last few remaining monsters, like this goon, this coomer goblin, whatever he is. You see the cages are locked. I have to clear the whole room before it lets me out. There he's up on his high horse, shooting me with his fairy wand. So, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna run up, and I'm gonna hit him with my sack, and interrupt his cast. Okay, I'm gonna get stuck, stuck on the stairs. Now I'm gonna hit him with my sack. So you sack tap him, interrupt his cast, and then you just swing at him. And you slice him in the nuts, slice him in the nuts, slice him in the nuts. Alright, easy peasy. Now I'm gonna loot the whole entire rest of the room, checking all the vases and breakable boxes. Uh, also a good time to talk about wands. There's wands in the game. They do magic. Different types of magic. You can use them for all kinds of things. Kiting enemies, shooting down flying enemies, all that kind of fun stuff. But Monkey Man doesn't like wands, so Monkey Man doesn't really use wands. Alright, new monsters, new tips. Naked Mole right here. As a charge up attack, you have to interrupt. You can't block it with your weapon. Also, there's slimes. They're all fairly easy to kill. There's a few different types of slime. The blue slime, as you see. There's a green acid slime, a gold loot slime, uh, orange fire slime. They're uh, all pretty easy, excluding getting hit by them because they hit pretty hard. Other than that, easy peasy to deal with. The fire slimes will blow up if you hit them too much. You have to keep hitting them and kill them. You hit them just the right amount, they blow up. So look out for that. All right, let's touch on leveling up real quick. You level up, you get your health fully restored and you get some stat points and sometimes you get some skill points. Oh, stat points, you put them into strength, dexterity and intelligence. All of them are requirements for certain armors and weapons, but in the early game, I'd recommend focusing more on strength. So make sure you level up the other ones, but always put your extra point into strength. You'll see, because it gives more HP, more damage, Early game, it's big. Let's talk about environmental kills and traps. They're a big part of the game, and it'll turn this rather bad looking situation, I'm outnumbered, 
into a fairly good situation. What can I do? Can't fight all three of them. They're just gonna keep whacking me. Taking away my health. I can come over here and uh, use this spike trap. Maybe. Kind of ineffective. There's three of them. It'll take time. I'm gonna whack this barrel and uh, monkey use tool. Monkey go boom. Ape man is again victorious. All right, you've been crawling around the dungeon. You hear some crazy chanting. What's going on? You find this weird, crazy plaque looking guy and he's going to give you a quest. And uh, they're kind of hard sometimes like that. Clear a room in under 30 seconds of entering. But if you get it done, you get some pretty sweet rewards, usually stat points. So it's worth doing. All right. So we have ran into a loot goblin, a goblin of loot. You kill him and you get fat loot from him. He doesn't take physical damage though, normally. So you can't whack him with your weapon. What you have to do is sack whack him into the wall of spikes. He will try to do the same to you. So you can uh, get in his face and time your wax to his wax and just interrupt him. Or you can do a little uh, loop, doop, and pull and uh, make him run next to the spikes like that. And then you get around him and bam. All the loot's yours. He also drops the silver key for level one. The silver key is what you need to get to level two. It'll open up the gate. So make sure you pick that up. And easy peasy. You just do a little loop to doop and swack. Alrighty, you pretty much cleared out level one. And let's head up to level two. Level two. What's new about level two? Mobs are stronger. There might be a few new traps, but I'm not going to ruin that for you guys. There is a few new things and I'll find them and give them a brief look over on level two. But other than that, it is pretty similar to level one. Alrighty. So we've made it to our first shop. You'll see the little sign, a little blue light, and bam, there's a naked mole rat gentleman. Quite fine, quite dapper, yes, but we have no money and all of our stuff is junk because we're level like two or something. But so what you don't need, I usually keep my wands just in case. And uh, we don't have anything now, we don't have any money now, but soon, you know. We'll have enough shekels to come back and get us some decent gear if we don't find something better along the way. Alrighty, here's another fun little oddity of the, the higher levels, I wouldn't say. But here's a fun little oddity, it is the drop chest. Drop shoot? Whatever. You drop items in this and you'll get them in that little chest in that first room in the very first level. So if you die, you don't completely start fresh. Like you can put some armor and weapons that you don't need into the chute and have them for your next life if you die. But you see, Ape Man did not know about the drop chute because Ape Man does not use the drop chute because Ape Man never dies. Ape Man is also super humble, never brags. One of my best qualities. But that is the last oddity of level two. We're gonna find the stairway to level three or the ladder or whatever it is and show you the last tip I'm gonna put in the video. Eight man forgot abilities. You press B, you open it up and you can perma learn these abilities. You get these abilities from leveling up and gear that you find. And so that's like a little bonus tip. There you go. And you'll keep these abilities after death. All right, the last tip of the video, the forge. Usually find them on level three. There's always a box with free stuff in it. So what you can do at the forge is make weapons. You can you get a hilt and a blade and little gems and stuff that give you enchantments on your blade. So I have been looting random stuff throughout the dungeon. I don't have any gems, but here's my blade. All right, it's kind of banged up because we're like, we're like, what, level four or something? And a hilt, that has enchantments on it. If we had some uh, gems, we'd have like lightning and fire and all the other kind of stuff. But the fun part about it is you can make it look how you want. You can put random stuff all over it. And so these are just decorations. I could put them anywhere on the blade I want. I'm just going to be boring and uh, make a normal looking sword, right? Because I don't have anything cool to do with it. But yeah, that is the last tip of the video. Easy to find, usually on level three. You collect resources for it throughout the levels. Yeah, you get to name it. Have fun. What should I name it though? I do not know. Mm, it's really ugly, like butt ugly. Oh wait, no. Mm, yes. Ah, that is a perfect name. Ah, yes. You should do what it says. Obey the name of the sword. But yeah, we made it. It has better stats, stats than the sword that we've picked up. If we had jewels and stuff to enchant it with, you would have cool abilities. But yeah, baby's first crafted 
<laughs> well, crafted gun, baby's first crafted sword. Well, I hope this guide has been helpful to you on your first foray into Slasher's Keep. I love the art style. The gameplay is fun. I I already beat it. I quit playing the other games and making videos on them just because I wanted to keep playing this. It ate up all the time. It's real fun. It's real unique. I love the first person aspect. It's a great time. So it's like 10 bucks. Go pick it up. Have a good time. There's definitely more than $10 worth of content in it. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like, sub, comment, all the other stuff that helps the channel grow. If you want to see a video on how to fight the boss that comes up after the first couple of levels, uh, ask me and I will. I can show you how to do it with just the sword. But uh, yeah, other than that, this has been Glide. Out.